Uh, okay, cool. So I was originally going to, uh, so about a, uh, during Miami conference, or I guess, you know, doing a meetup like ours, you hear about all these interesting technical projects, like when they're first announced, right? Uh, and you have a very hand wavy, you, you have to get a hand wavy understanding of how they work. So we've been talking about this project Minimint for some months, and uh, then I met Eric in Miami at the conference in Miami. And I met him at PlebFi, I met him at the open source stage on one day, and then the next day, and each time day we'd talk a little bit more. And that's one of the benefits of coming to events like this, is that uh, you actually kind of get some face time with people and start to you know, exchange ideas. And every time we talked, I was like more and more interested in what he was doing. So when I came back from uh, Miami, I started uh, contributing to, or you know, playing around with the, the uh, project. I, I played around with a few projects, like I hope, I hope you do when you come home. I, I played around with Sensei, which was awesome, uh, and uh, a couple others that I learned about in, uh, in Miami, and I, I encourage you all to do that when you get home. Just like, if you heard about a couple interesting things, like download the code and run it and see, you know, see what disaster you run into. Uh, and then, you know, as happened with Sensei, the maintainer will go and explain a bunch of things to you, uh, which is like uh, kind of an invaluable experience. How often can you have John Control explaining lightning to you? Uh, it's, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's one of the benefits of coming to these. So, uh, so yeah, I started contributing Miniman, and I, I wanted to give a talk, like just a, a very basic talk about how, what a Chamian bank is uh, in Python, like basically a, a tutorial on blind signatures and stuff, but I honestly never got around to it because I, I became so interested in Minimint itself, this uh, project I'm going to be talking about. So I'm just going to share basically what I've learned over the last like five weeks uh, working on this project, and uh, basically what it is and why I think it's interesting. And uh, yeah, so I'll get started with that. So basically the motivating question here is like, I think everyone over the next decade or two is going to have to ask themselves this question, how do I access the Bitcoin network? And for people in this room, myself included, the answer is like, I'll, I'll do it myself. Right? Uh, I'll run a Bitcoin node myself because I know how to use a command line. I'll run a Lightning node myself because I, I can do that. And uh, I know how to set up, I know how to do port forwarding, I know how Tor works, I know there's this big thick list of, of things, right? I know how to access a private key, I'm comfortable with a hardware wallet. Like, when you step back you see all the, you know, the, the uh, complexity there, right? But it's great that people like us and hopefully more than us can can access Bitcoin ourselves directly without without trusting very much. That's like the promise I think that we see in Bitcoin. Uh, but then you know a lot of people outside this room go the polar opposite, right? They end up tr finding some financial institution based in New York or San Francisco, you know, run by a bunch of snakes. Uh, <laughs> that you know you don't know anyone there. They have notoriously horrible customer service. They have a notoriously predatory product offering, uh, and that's who you trust with your financial future. This is what where most people find themselves in, right? They, like, and you know, like we sometimes with these technical things, we, we, we can get a little uh, uh, detached from reality because like so most people are doing that, right? And uh, and so that's what Minimint is: is it's sort of another answer to this question, not doing it yourself, not outsourcing it to some big institution that you should not trust, but somewhere in between, right? And so uh, if you go back to this, oh my, oh god, I wonder if all my slides are going to be the wrong resolution now. Uh, okay, we'll see. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is a uh, health Finney's face is on the left side off the screen here. Uh, so uh, this is a, a famous post of health Finney in 2010, uh, saying that actually there's a very good reason for like Bitcoin back banks to exist. So this is like an intermediary between accessing Bitcoin your, yourself and uh, maybe just you know one huge bank, right? E each issuing their own currency redeemable for Bitcoin. Bitcoin itself cannot scale uh, to every you know to every person. The second layer of things can be more uh, lighter weight, more trans more uh, efficient. Uh, you know, Bitcoin backed banks will solve these problems, so on and so forth. And then, you know, of course, there's a comment at, at below here. You know, sir, why would my currency be anything other than Bitcoin, right? So that's what <laughs> that's what the answer is always in these sorts of discussions. It's like, I'm Hal Finney, and you guys are this guy down here. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you know, so uh, like this is a long vision, and there's a lot of people that are working towards this. Like Galois, I think, is a sponsor here. They're working towards this, uh, just just kind of like a middle ground that more people could uh, could access Bitcoin through. And that's what Fediment is. Uh, and so I'm going to tell the story of what Fediment is, like in a couple steps, basically how it was developed. So first, it was this thing called the Chamian Mint, uh, and then the Mint became federated, meaning it wasn't one little bank; it was like a group of people collectively running a bank. Uh, and then it added the ability to they, they added the ability to speak with the, speak with themselves uh, speak between them and the rest of the Lightning Network. Uh, and then there's a lot of exciting possibilities in the future that don't exist yet uh, that I think you could build on top of this. Uh, so this project is extremely extremely immature. 
uh, maybe two months ago, there was only one person working on it, and now there's basically maybe three of us that have written code in the in the actual uh, part that deals with the, the core part. Like other people working on the build system and this and that. There's only three people really writing code in the the core thing. So it's a very very tiny project. It was fun, as a research project from Blockstream for like a, over a year. Uh, so shout out to them for uh, supporting this. Uh, and so the idea of a Chaumian Mint, uh, and it, so I just want to preface this, this is an interesting topic in a bad presentation. I didn't have enough time to like make pretty slides, so bear with me, I got a lot of bullet points and a lot of words, so I apologize for, about that ahead of time. But uh, hopefully the, the subject matter will carry the, carry the weight here, because it, it is pretty fascinating. So, uh, so starting with the Chaumian Mint, what is a Chaumian Mint? So it's basically like a, a setup to having uh, like private bearer IOUs. So take some asset and you get an IOU to it. Uh, but it's private, so when you go and are issued this asset, uh, and then you hold on to it for a while, and then this IOU, and then you go to redeem it, the issuer cannot see, cannot correlate the issuance with the redemption, which is pretty pretty cool. Uh, that uh, it, it's a very private way to. Uh, it's it's like so like if you think of you know what are they, what are they called uh, confidential transactions, right? That's where you hide the amount. This is sort of the inverse. You hide you know, the, which thing you're spending. The amounts are fixed, uh, kind of like, like coins, like dollar, like, a, you know, quarter, penny, dime, right? You have fixed amounts of these IOUs, so you can spend any uh, combination of these, so you can spend uh, any amount you want, but uh, the, like, which coin exactly you're spending is hidden. The amount is not. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. And they've been around since the 1980s, you know, uh, pre-Bitcoin, almost pre-Internet. Uh, and so that's kind of a, an interesting question. Why did this interesting privacy technology was in invented so long ago? It's funny when you read the paper, it was clearly written on a typewriter, uh, <laughs> which, is, which is different, right? You can see all the, like, blemishes. It's like scanned typewriter paper. Uh, and so there's a kind of a question. You're like, well, why didn't it take off? Uh, so hopefully we'll kind of address that a little bit. And so here's an a, a image I stole from another talk about, uh, so the system here to get these private uh, bearer IOUs is something called a blind signature, right? So I am not a cryptographer and I have a relatively hand-wavy understanding of this, but I'll try to explain it. So what we're trying to do here is follow this path, right? Uh, you have a message and you're trying to get a signature for it, uh, but you don't want the, Per the entity, uh, I guess you think of this like in a coin joint, for example, like Wasabi Wallet and these coordinators, right? Uh, I forget like what step in the process is, but you know, the, like the registration of the UTXOs or something, something like that is, is blinded. So there's like some, someone here trying to do a signature, but you don't want them to see what they're signing, basically. And that's how you get this uh, thing where the, uh, the issuance of the token and the redemption of the token is not correlatable, right? Because uh, when, uh, yeah, that's. That's what we're, what we're trying to achieve here, right? So you start with a message, here's a message, and you blind it. So uh, you can just like add a, uh, a scalar to the pub key. I think that's one way to blind it. Or you can like hash the message and add, and add the like the scalar times a public point or something like that, like some operation uh, that is then reversible later uh, on the signature. So you apply, uh, an operation to the public or to the, to the message, right? So you had a message, now you have a blind message. You give it over here to the person who's going to sign it. They sign that. They don't know what they're signing. Like in the original paper from David Chom, he taught, it's like, it's like a carbon copy paper, right? Like you can, you can sign on this carbon copy paper, but you can't see through it. So your signature will go down onto the paper below it, right? So you can be signing a check, but you don't know what's on the check. It's kind of like that. So you, so they go and sign this, this message. They don't know what it is. And then uh, you, basically this blinding operation can be reversed, so you get like a real signature for this real message. Does that make sense? Did I get that right for the cryptographers in the room? Any, hey, ben Carman approves. We're, we're, we're cooking with gas here. All right. Similar to confidential transactions in that way, right? That you can encrypt the amounts and then decrypt them. Yeah, I think it's, I don't totally understand how confidential transactions work, but I bet it's something similar, yeah. I don't know, anyone know? No yeah, it's, it's the exact same. It's just like you were saying, right? It's like you think about for a UTXO, right? It's like you're specifying you'd have the script pub key of like where it's going and the amount. And so which one? Of, if we blind one, we can't blind both of them because then like you have no idea, right? But you need to blind one of those to make it confidential. And yeah. so for this one, you're blinding the uh, you're not blinding the amount. You're blinding the where the script pub key is. Yeah. And so when this like spending thing goes, so when so basically like what we're going to see later is that issuance is this process where 
there's like a token, it's just going to be a nonce, right? Uh, and the Chaumian bank will sign it, right? And so they see the blinded message, they see the blinded signature. When you go and redeem it, you will give them the unblinded message and the unblinded signature. And so since they don't have the blinding key, since the user never gives them the blinding key, they can't correlate the two. And so that's how you achieve privacy. Uh, you, you give them one pair at the beginning, uh, message and uh, signature, and then you give uh, them another pair, uh, message and signature, and they can ver ver like verify both of those. Uh, and so, yeah, let me see my slides. Yeah, so uh, so this is basically how it works. Uh, a Chaumian bank, in like the traditional sense, this is where it's a bunch of word salad. Uh, I apologize for this, I need to start drawing better or something. Uh, yeah, so the issuance, Mint signs a uh, blind, proofs of blind signature of a blind nonce, uh, and when it spends it, they see a, an unblinded nonce and an unblinded signature, right? So that's, they see these guys when the uh, spend occurs. And so the Mint checks that the signature was valid, and they also check that the blinded nonces are only spent once. So it's the, the Mint's job to uh, just, that's basically their only job. That made their main job is to just protect against double spends. Uh, and this, the key is, as I already kind of alluded to, they can't see which nonce was used because uh, they never see the blinding key, right? So they can't map this pair to this pair, you know, this pair, do, do, the set, first line, the second line. They can't do that mapping, so uh, it's it's very private. Any questions there? So does that mean that they that there is some censorship possibility because you're trusting them to, to basically? True or false Absolutely. So this is a trusted system. Like it's the mint. It's the mint. It's 100% trust based. But right? because you can't correlate them, then they you can't discriminately uh, censor. censor. Yeah, you could censor everybody. You basically you like. You gotta censor everybody or nobody. Or yeah. Just, like you're randomly picking who to censor. You yeah, more or less. Yeah. 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 So the idea here is like, uh, you know, in terms of the like, either you do it yourself or you trust some far off emperor with Bitcoin emperor to do your Bitcoin for you. The idea is like, well, maybe, like, who would you trust the most, right? What if they actually could run something like this, right? Like, that's, to me, that's, from first principles, that's how I'd like to see Bitcoin evolve, is like, people would access Bitcoin through the, through the person they trust the most. And in, for, like, some of you, it would be you, because you're an expert, right? But for some of your family members, it might be you, because you're an expert, right? <laughs> uh, and they would trust that you wouldn't betray them. And also, it would be nice if it's like, well, what if it were, you know, uh, me and Carman and a few of us, right, uh, on, and together we offer Bitcoin services for your mom, right? Like that would be, the, 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 <laughs> sorry, that didn't sound right, but uh, <laughs> excuse me, first talk in a while, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what if, uh, like, you know, like that, that the, the costs of, like, uh, of, 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 of cheating there or censoring there would be so high, right? Because you'd pay these real world costs, right? And I think, so I think this is gonna outcompete centralized things over time because the, the service is gonna be a lot better and the chances of them screwing you over is probably gonna be lower. That's my theory at least. So the trust model is, uh, it boils down to a federation, you trust model. You're trusting the so federation. We're, we're not there yet. So oh, this is just, okay. uh, just, just like the single, that's a great question. So let's see what my next slide is. Uh, so that's in like two slides. So Chami Minute, the pros. Very good privacy and it's very scalable, right? Because a lot of stuff is moved off chain. A lot of transactions can be moved off chain. Uh, bad, it's a centralized honeypot, right? That's why this thing has been existed since the 80s and doesn't nobody uses it, right? There have been pilots and they always get shut down, right? Because you know, why would Visa let this happen? Why would you know? Why would uh, the Senate like people, uh, political people, would not like this, right? Uh, and it's hard to pay between. Go ahead. They would let it. They should let it happen because of the pros. Yes, that's very. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, unfortunately, the, the U.S. market's e-cash deployment failed because those banks got acquired and then those other banks didn't care anymore. Yeah. And not for any particular legal Interesting. Order. I'd love to hear more. I, yeah, I'm not uh, so familiar with it. The, the Mark Twain that. Bank. Yeah, okay, Mark Twain Bank. Very good. I'll, I'll have to look into that. Uh, you know, another problem is the mints can't pay each other, so you maybe end up with just like one huge mint. Uh, you can't spend between, and it's not auditable, right, uh, because you get these blinded IOUs. And, uh, you can't, for the same reason as private, you can't correlate the IOUs with uh, like a proof of reserves or something. You can't say whether the amount of IOUs equals the amount of uh, reserves or else there's, <coughs> the, the privacy make gone. themselves a bunch of Bitcoin? Huh? Can the Mint make themselves a bunch of Bitcoin? Yeah, it's a trust-based system. They can do whatever the hell they want, right? Wow. Uh, but they'll have to pay the consequences of, of uh, you know. Uh, stealing from their users. Yeah, stealing from their users, yeah. So like the idea is like you, you, you don't want to select a 
a guardian, so to speak, uh, some owner in the bank that is going to have a huge price if they they'll pay a huge price if they did that, right? That where it wouldn't be worth it for them reputationally, for example, to destroy their life, right? Uh, which I think is true in a lot of places. Uh, okay, so I had some code examples here. I'm going to skip those. Uh, uh, this is out of luck, so I got to return to that later. Sorry. Uh, Okay, so the next evolution, so you had a Chamian bank and then they made it federated, right? So this is sort of, uh, the goal here is to uh, address that first thing of the centralized honeypot, right? So instead of having one bank uh, that can maybe easily be shut down or you just have full trust in one person, you can, uh, because Bitcoin allows for collective ownership in multi-sig, right, which is not really possible with like a dollar or something, or like a most commodities like gold, uh, Bitcoin actually allows for this. So why not have the mint be uh, like a collective where uh, you don't trust one party, you trust like T event, Right? And so if you think of like the old Xiaomi Mint as like a state machine, this is like a replicated state machine where you have it running in a few places and each round is like an epoch, right? kind of like a block in the blockchain. But there's no blockchain here. It's just like, it's kind of like just a UTXO set, no blockchain. Because, uh, yeah, at least at the, at the current, at the current round, uh, state. And so uh, each round is just a list of transactions that the, uh, the guardians validate or that the, the individual, uh, like the federations uh, validate. Uh, and the outcomes are synced using a, a consensus al algorithm called uh, uh, HBBFT, Honey Badger, Byzantine Fault Tolerant Consensus Algorithm, which I think was maybe produced by shitcoiners. Uh, it's one, one benefit of shitcoins, they've worked, done a lot of research on stuff like this. Uh, so, uh, so is, is there a transaction format in this model, or is it like Chom where it's Yes, so a my code here actually is useful. This is what the transaction looks like. Uh, so it's very simple, inputs and outputs like Bitcoin, and then uh, signature. Uh, a cross cross input signature, and so uh, we'll kind of allude to this later. But uh, basically, everything is based on modules here. Uh, so there's in the actual Fediment, there's three modules. There's an on-chain wallet. There's an eCash thing for holding for uh, dealing with these IOUs, and then there's a Lightning wallet to do basically an escrow to allow people to incentivize a Lightning node operator to send and receive Bitcoin over the Lightning network for them. Uh, and so basically, these are this is like a generic trait in Rust, and so you can have uh, this is, well, really cool thing about Minimint or Fitment is that uh, you could basically do whatever the hell you want here, right? Like if you wanted to do like some sort of like a, a cold wallet thing, if you wanted to do some kind of proof of reserves, if, if you had a cold wallet that wasn't as private, if you wanted to do uh, some kind of lending thing, if you wanted to do stable coins or something, you know, ducks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you could do like whatever you want here, which is really cool. Uh, so one of my what I want to do in the hackathon this weekend is I want to try to run simplicity in here. Uh, like do simplicity transactions, that would be sick, right? So I think I think like something like simplicity could be deployed here in the first time. And a cool thing about this versus Liquid is like Liquid's like one giant federation, right? Uh, and a lot of like sunk costs in terms of like so many member, uh, members, it's going to be hard to change, right? Well, these the idea of these federations is that they're small and agile, right? So yeah, just run it and uh, run simplicity, try it, you know, run JavaScript or Solidity, whatever you. Uh, you know. <laughs> Whatever you want, like run it. So yeah, it's very simple. It's a count system, not a YouTube system. Can you just give like a quick higher level overview of the actual how it operates with the members and the banks? I don't think you really talk about like the issuance and how do they transact? They don't transact with, with the uh, yeah. So basically, the issuance is just this this thing here. Yeah. Uh, it's just like you have an IOU, uh, and then like it's just they, they they basically produce a new set of uh, blinded signatures and uh, and. Like you just get a little piece of data, which is uh, you get a uh, the, the the client saves a nonce, an, like an unblinded nonce and an unblinded signature, right? So they save this, they save yeah the message and the signature. That's like the coin. Yeah, that's the coin. The coin is. The and, and then the this is the coin. Yeah. So the like here's the nonce and here's the signature. Okay. That's a coin. Yeah. Is and then what? They give you can give it to someone else. Like, yeah. So so you uh, you, you so you create a pair of socks, yeah right? you yeah. create a transaction yep. and uh, in the input you have the unblinded nonce and the unblinded signature. Mm -hmm. So that's what the, the the mint has not seen that before. And when you give it to them, they'll say, okay, I know I issued that. I don't know which one it was, but I know I issued it. So I'm going to check that off of the spent coins list. That one can no longer be spent. Uh, and you know, there's an epic, so it's atomic, like you can't double spend because they look at all the things in one epic and make sure that uh, there's no double spending. Uh, and then what was your question? How? Like I want to buy a pair, if I got some coins minted. Yeah, so then I, I think, I think you'd, uh, so actually, 
in the eCash thing, what you do is you'd give the coins to another person. You'd like give the actual bearer instrument, yeah. and they would redeem it in a transaction. And if that worked, it's theirs now. But the, like, that's really cumbersome, and like if we're not in the same federation, it won't work. So that's one of the reasons why we introduced Lightning. Yep. Is because like Lightning is like this standard interface that everyone speaks, right? Uh, so that's the like fa final thing we're going to go over is like using Lightning yep. to do this because actually trading these little bearer instruments that are unique to one custodian, and the idea would be there'd be many custodians. This is, is never going like to work. Better, is there some like bank ID? You say okay, this coin works with this bank. How do you? Tell people which so the idea eventually is like the actual coin itself is kind of like an implementation detail in a wallet, uh, and the, this is also like I don't know yet. Like it's such yeah. an early stage project. This is what the exciting thing here is like you could uh, if you started working on this, like you could get to define what that's going to be. Uh, it's not like a fully fleshed out thing. So that's an exciting thing about being on an early project. You mentioned uh, something about like uh, denominations of coins. Yeah. Why does it have to be a That's a privacy thing. Yeah, well, it's also like, so you could, uh, let me think how to answer that. I mean, if you're the only person that withdrew 1,337 coins or whatever, I mean. Yeah. And then you, someone then you could correlate money. the history there, maybe. Like, if it was a unique, if there was an amount that was, like, unique. Uh, yeah, if you, if you had a, let's say you had a, a type of coin for every possible amount, denomination, or if, like, you... Maybe it was a plain text thing in the blinded signature. Well, that's like correlatable, mm -hmm. right? So you just have like uh, these. You have different key pairs uh, uh, that the the bank does their th their blind signature process on. You have different key pairs for different denominations. So you like have one millisat, ten millisats, one hundred, uh, up to a lot. So the fun thing about this is like one of the things I implemented was coin selection, right? But it's coin selection like a cash register, not coin selection like a UTXO. Uh, so that's that's kind of fun. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So, see, so you have this consensus algorithm. Not really a blockchain, but the like a good question. I was just to ask, go ahead. Yeah. What does the consensus algorithm actually cover? It's the UTXO set, and they all agree on the modifications to it. Yeah. It basically, like, no what is so? So you you get like uh, a round of transactions, and. Uh, Every module has like uh, I think it's more or less like I think you, you you agree to which transactions were valid. You agree to like the fee rate for like unchain uh, withdrawals. You agree to uh, contracts that were like created or redeemed, uh, like a, a few things like that. You you, you just, this is I'm a little fuzzy on the consensus algorithm part of this, but it's basically like the state of the mint at every single. Uh, at every single step, like which 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 blind nonces, for example, are still spendable, uh, more or less. Go ahead. It's kind of like a diff to the data. Like everything's stored in an embedded database called the sled. We need to use a new one, but everything's stored there, and so it's kind of like a you kind of a degree on the diff to that database, more or less. Uh, I'm, I'm not a little fuzzy on the exact implementation of it. I do. You said it was account based, uh, but you still have the UTXOs or UTXOs pertaining to the mint. Yeah, so this is like on the e the little IOU layer. So like, okay. yeah, the the IOU layer is for like s s spending okay. uh, privately uh, and maybe to yourself. Uh, th uh, the uh, there's also like an on-chain wallet that just like is a custodian, okay. right? And that's kind of one of the flaws here is like you'd like to know that those two have the same uh, amount. But yeah. There's no guarantee there. Go ahead. This one doesn't have any assumptions on how long a round of consent, how long of an, an epic takes, uh, but it's it's slower because you can't make certain optimizations, I guess. So like this is a thing that we can develop in the future. Like one of them is like it's synchronous, and then if that round fails, you move to async and you kind of go back and forth, or you do synchronous where the time bound changes depending on whether it's like succeeding or failing. Uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, okay, so wallet text. I apologize, but here's what like a deposit works. So the the federation has uh, there's a config. And there's a uh, descriptor, uh, witness script hash, sorted multi, uh, k, that's how many to sign, and then their pub keys, right? So this is just a standard descriptor for a multi-sig. Uh, you could have a fixed address, right? But then it's hard to like prove if you're depositing in here, like, hey, that was me that did this, right? Uh, you, could have, you could have the federation like give you an address. 
you know, generate unique, unique address. But the problem there is that then the consensus algorithm has to do, has to do one round to get you your, your deposit address, right? So it'd take like a little uh, you know, second or two. Uh, so it can't be instant. So what we do instead is we have this uh, public descriptor and then we use key tweaking, kind of like Liquid does. So uh, the user generates a key pair and uh, we use Miniscript uh, to tweak the, like that's the, what the call is. Uh, so you tweak each of the Federation pub keys, each one of these. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, you tweak those with uh, the key pair that you generated, uh, and then you deposit Bitcoin into that. And you wait a uh, number of blocks that's set by the uh, Federation, like I think in Liquid it's like 101. Uh, in this it might be lower, because the idea would be like smaller amounts potentially, but it would be configurable per Federation. And, uh, and then once that number of blocks has uh, passed, and this is just like how the Federation defines final settlement, uh, maybe it could be different according to the amount too, like for smaller amounts they might let it be uh, uh, smaller. Uh, and then you give the, uh, so then the user to, to basically finish the deposit, uh, they give the key pair to the uh, Federation, I think it's the key pair, and the, uh, like a Merkle proof that it was in a block. Uh, so then the, 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 uh, the Federation can go find it. And after that, the Federation can spend the Bitcoin uh, however they want, it's their, their Bitcoin, and the user is credited with, uh, uh, this all ha happens in one of those transactions, like the Mint, or the on-chain wallet has like an input, which is I think this uh, key pair and, uh, and a Merkle proof, and then the output is like you get eCash tokens. You get one of these IOUs, something like that. Uh, and so, yeah, after end confirmation to zero, that's how deposit works. Does that kind of make sense? Go ahead. There's not enough, uh, it, let's say they put in, like they did zero comp and then there was a reorg, and so your Bitcoin didn't go in, but you did get the token. Like this, this was not working well. Like, is everything broken now, or is there just you have tokens that aren't really backed by anything? Yeah, now, now the back, now, well, now the bank isn't backed, right? If they gave out tokens and they don't have the underlying asset that's supposed to back them, now the bank is not fully backed and the bank has a pretty uh, difficult moral problem to solve. So the, the mechanism but this is the same thing with liquid and other things. For, so the mechanism for assuring that it is fully backed is that this algorithm yeah. works and that you trust them. That I mean, Bitcoin has the same problem, right? Like Bitcoin has the same thing. There are, how many blocks does it take to spend mine Bitcoin, right? Like final settlement's 101 blocks. Uh, and that, that's never happened, 101 block reorg, but it could, right? And then, uh, you know. Then the 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 the, the uh, whoever got that Bitcoin could have could have uh, spent it by then and would be a double spend, I guess. Uh, can you explain why it's hard to prove that you deposited to that address? If it's a static address, yeah. Like, how would you prove that? Couldn't you make like a signed message? Yeah, like it's just like a, another extra kind okay. of weird thing. Uh, yeah, you could do that. Okay. Yeah, you could do that. It's probably just an implementation detail, but when you deposit, how do you know what what, what coins are going to get back? Like, 520s or 250s or hundred dollars like you know I think you I think you uh, so those are the messages the, I think those are the messages uh, that you that the blind signature that you ask them to blind sign you like these are they might be like pub keys or there's some like I don't totally understand this but uh, you have like a range of messages for different uh, amount tiers and so this would just be like what the the federation members sign. Uh, so you like in that like output so one of these transactions. That request it, huh? You request it when you do the deposit sort of. Yeah. Sort of yeah. Uh, What's and kind of what my question was like when you do this like generate an address and then like it gets confirmed so then they don't give you the tokens you come to them and say like I deposited with this transaction mm -hmm. give me a token and then they do that it's not like a deposit then they send you like the email to you it's more like you know if you. Come yeah, the there's a lot of stuff in here that's like that, where it's like you do something and then you, there's like uh, some consent, like epics of consensus that might take a little while, uh, and then you like go and finish it. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you if your like client doesn't do that, like your money's just sitting in there. So in that case, you'd like go and like I want two fifty. Yeah. Well, it's probably like a wallet invitation. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So you started the talk saying that, you know, like a problem for someone who's not too technical is how they'll use Bitcoin and they're mm -hmm. kind of forced to use uh, these exchanges, right? Or they, they choose have, to. They, they choose, choose to. to. Yeah. But so, so how is this going to solve that? Like in what way is this solving the issue of how somebody who's not too technical uses Bitcoin? Uh, I'll, I'll get to that. So like the use case, the first use case here is like a, is like a private custodial lightning wallet, right? Which 
doesn't exist all that much right now. Uh, and I mean, the, the idea is like basically what, what Halfini was talking about, which is like there's just a bunch of little banks, right? So it's like, a coin, it's like if there were lots of little coin bases that, and you knew who ran them, or lots of little things uh, like, like credit unions kind of. There's lots of little credit unions. Uh, it's also just like even if they're not non even if there's enough technical people, there's not going to be enough UTXOs. So this is kind of yeah. Like a way yeah, that's, UTXOs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's another good way to put it. And so how exactly does that solve the problem of not everyone can have a UTXO because you have to deposit some sort of Bitcoin into this bank and then you get yeah. those tokens. So there has to be a way to send Bitcoin. You, right? you can get paid in the Charmian tokens directly. And then, mm -hmm. and then withdraw. Yeah. The next part's Lightning, right? And that yeah. solves the, hey, you don't have to make any I mean, the, yeah, the, but the, the way like, that's inherent with the, Lightning, right? But, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. The, the thing that it's, this solves is that instead of trusting, like Coinbase, you're like trusting you know, Brian Armstrong and just him, basically. Yeah. Or whatever but with a federation it could be a multiple people and then because it's so much cheaper to or easier to bootstrap one of these rather than bootstrapping something like coinbase the idea is that they all compete against each other and that that would it, it's i mean it is like what hal finney was writing about like if they all compete against each other then the incentive is to collect fee revenue and then try to be honest because if you're not, then no one's going to deposit you, with you. I think you. they compete on like trust and service, mm -hmm. right? Which is how financial institutions yeah. all, uh, used to work but when, think, when it was le legal to create them, right? Yeah. I yeah. think um, <laughs> if you're going to a future where there's a ton of these like little banks, uh, a lot of people are going to get wrecked, right? Uh, with uh, scams, right? At the beginning. And then, yeah. In the is that not yeah. happening right now? <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Did you read the news? Within Bitcoin, <laughs> even doing, like, yeah. like, we have Wells Fargo, you know, like real financial institutions that are supposed to be regulated, like they still, you know, do bad things to the customers. It's lesser systemic risk, right? It's yeah. just the, the That's tiny customers that get wrecked rather than, you know, a hundred million people. Yeah. Um, and this is this is older even than than Chami and Mint, right? This yeah. is like free or high I heard about this free market money. Mm -hmm. Um that like you have better money if you have lots of smaller yeah. issues. I mean one of my motivations here is my my grandpa was like a small town banker. There was like seven hundred people in this town. Uh, my dad, my dad's dad was the veterinarian. My mom's dad was the banker, and like he was just like a pillar of trust, right? Like if you were in trouble, you'd go to him, and he could like help you sort your problems out. And it, it made for like a strong community, right? And so like I'd like to see more of a world like that, where it's more like human relationships uh, over just like you know file a support ticket email, right? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Is it fair to say like also? It's you, there's also some competition between the different, like there's different solutions to this problem, right? Yeah. It, just, it seems like there's some, there's a lot of overlap with space chains. Yeah. And, you know, drive chain, we ever did totally. so They're about the same thing. Liquid, you know, and they could all coexist. Maybe totally. That's the cool thing about Lightning is like Lightning, can, this is one of the uh, sort of like interesting things, and this is like, well, Lightning can be like a, a thing that connects these things, right? And that Arrow makes it. actually similar too, and that was one of the things they, they did to make sure that yeah. they could operate over Lightning. Yep. So yeah, like I, I don't, I don't see a world where like everyone uses one thing, right? Like that, I don't think that's gonna. But I hope there's more stuff what like. In Bitcoin. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, I see that. But uh, yeah. Okay, uh, we're like running over, so let me get moving. Uh, this is good though. I, I do like these Socratic seminars, right? So it's weird when I'm just talking the whole time. I like to be interrupted. So this is kind of what it looks like now, right? You have this consensus algorithm that like connects these federations, right? Uh, or, or sorry, the, the, these are like the members, right? And then they kind of come to consensus and the user can like access them this way, right? And so uh, <laughs> Lightning, so here's the problem, you can't uh, exchange these tokens between federations, right? Uh, solution, use uh, these tokens to incentivize Lightning node operators uh, to do stuff for you over Lightning. Uh, and so here's like a use, uh, I'll, I'll cover how like a send and receive works. And these are like, to me these are interesting just as like a, like a interesting like oh, how, how Lightning works, not just uh, how this works. So, so send, user wants to pay an invoice, right? There's an invoice, they scan on their phone, they want to pay it. It has payment hash X, right? So user has eCash, they, these little uh, blind, blind, message, blind uh, or, uh, message and signatures. Uh, and so they deposit this into the federation in a contract. It's basically an escrow. It says that it's, uh, this eCash is redeemable uh, to anybody who pre uh, presents a pre-image. Why? Uh, and that's basically what a lightning payment is. You like, go get the pre-image, right? Uh, and so the user tells uh, a, a Lightning node called the Gateway, who's willing to be uh, paid in eCash tokens, right? They, so the, the Gateway trusts the Federation. The Federation does not trust the Gateway. Uh, the user does not trust the Gateway. The, they trust the Federation because they get paid in eCash tokens. Uh, 
So the user tells the gateway, like, hey, here's a contract, right? And there's going to be a small spread, right? If they go and redeem this, they'll be able to make a little money, a uh, little e-cash, right? And as long as they trust that this is, uh, they can withdraw it, they'll make a little money, right? So uh, the gateway goes and buys the pre-image with, like, Lightning Bitcoin, right? And once they have that, they can always, like, redeem it uh, for Lightning, for on-chain Bitcoin. Uh, and so at that point, they, they go and tell the Federation, it's like, okay, we got the pre-image, right? Give me the e-cash tokens. Uh, and then the, you know, consensus round runs, uh, and the Federation basically enforces an escrow contract, contract by checking if the pre-image is valid. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So it's a cool, it's a clever thing about it's using incentives and like this, the trust. You trust that this uh, Federation is honest and can do this. Uh, and it's also neat because like it's another way for your lightning node to make, uh, make yield, right? Like you can say like, okay, well, uh, I got this liquidity sitting around, right? Am I willing to be paid in eCash tokens? Uh, for some federation, you probably would be, and you can earn yield that way, and you can, you know, put that liquidity to good use. Uh, and there could be multiple of these on one node, and they could, for example, like, well, the problem here is, like, you know, depositing in the on-chain stuff is going to take a long time for, you know, these pegging transactions to happen. So, like, let's say one node is running low on liquidity, like, e on lightning liquidity, and the other one is low on the eCash side. They could, like, settle with each other. Uh, so it'd be good to have a few of them. So I think you could have like a potentially have like a market of these. Like some so a company like Voltage could, you know, help plug you into stuff like this. How does the is there a plan for cross mint eCash being usable where one party is expecting eCash trust from one mint and another is using eCash to pay from another mint? Not that I'm aware of. Like that's basically Lightning. Lightning's like that's let's just okay, use Lightning. So you're stuff. saying withdraw from eCash to Lightning Bitcoin. Yeah, so the cool thing, from the outside, this looks like lightning. You wouldn't even know. Actually, you would know right now because the uh, when you receive, uh, the, I'll cover this next, there's one thing that you, there's one piece of information you leak that would uh, give it away. But uh, in, well, once you fix that, like, you wouldn't even know they're in a federation. You, they wouldn't even know that this is happening behind the scenes. It just looks like lightning from the outside, which is pretty amazing. Uh, so for anybody, any questions about this one? Yeah, so it's the same basic thing on for receive. It's another escrow. Uh, I'm sorry if I guess you guys can't see behind the podium here. Uh, but it's the reverse. So before, when it was a send, the, the user who's trying to send, send money over Lightning uh, would, would enter into an escrow to try to incentivize uh, uh, the, they, they would lock the money in. Here, it's the Lightning node that will actually put money into an escrow contract, right? So here's the whole, it's just, it's just reverse, right? I'm just, before we start the details, it's just reverse. So, okay. You're, you want to make, you want to get money, right? So you create a lightning invoice. Uh, you use a throwaway node pub key. You just generate it. And I think, uh, I'm not even sure, I forget if you even need to keep it, which is cool for privacy because it's like your node exists for one payment, right? So you can't, you know, your invoices can't be correlated to one node, uh, which is a nice little privacy uh, thing. If Tony's here, he's, he would be happy. Uh, so, uh, and so the question is, well then how can the payer find your node? Right? You apply a rock hint with the node, the gateway, right? And so, example, if there are multiple gateways, you could, you could maybe have multiple rock hints in here, uh, or something like that. I'm not, I haven't tried with multiple, but like, so the, the actual real lightning node is the second to last hop. The last hop doesn't exist uh, in, on, on the real lightning network, right? So the payment secret is a Schnorr pub key, and this is why it's, uh, it does leak a little information, right? If, if uh, the payer notices that you are, that you're, Payment, your payment secret is on that curve, on the like elliptic curve. Uh, they know you're in a federation. So like in the future, we should maybe like cash this or something, but that doesn't exist yet. Uh, and then they put the preamish for sale in the federation. When CTLCs fix that too, I guess. It has to be on the and, and what's the routing story here? For you need basically two gateways, right? For the eCash on one side, and if the yeah. receiver is expecting another kind of eCash. Yeah, How sure. Does round routing find that? Uh, it's the same way with the regular Lightning Network. I mean, most of the times you'd be paying at the beginning, it would just be like a non, like you don't know. It's just, it, you don't know who the, is on the other side, it doesn't matter. It's just like, it's the same as any other Lightning transaction. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah? What is the payment secret for the Lightning transaction? The payment secret? Yeah. It's the pre-image, right? Pre yeah, and then there's the payment hash. I think that those are the terms, right? Like, there's the pre-image, the pre right? So the pre-image is a pub key, and I'll explain why that is. So basically, like, if no gateway takes you up on this, then you can sweep, and the invoice expires, you can sweep the money back. So that's why it's got to be a, a pub key. 
So this is like how, if the escrow fails, this is how you can get your money back. On the reverse case, the, the escrow here would use a fixed gateway pub key. So the gateway just has a fixed pub key. And so if, uh, I gotta like reload this into my brain, like if, if, if the, I forget how this fails exactly, but if it does the, or maybe if the, uh, I forget, uh, yeah, I forget the problem, maybe it's the, I forget the problem here, but the, the gateway is able to reclaim if it, if it goes wrong. Uh, because it's, there's a pub key in the contract that they control, they have this private key to. Uh, and so you put it for sale, and so the gateway then receives an incoming HTLC, right? Like this invoice was given to somebody, they put it in their lightning node, just like any other lightning, or their lightning wallet, just like anywhere else, and like an incoming HTLC comes in. And so like I implemented this in, uh, in uh, C Lightning with a plugin. There's an HTLC underscore accepted uh, hook. And so you can write a thing to intercept that, right? And I think, I guess there's HTLC interceptors in LND, which I haven't I heard there fantastic or something. Uh, and uh, so you get this HTLC and it's like, okay, well, uh, you go ask the Federation, hey, is a preemptive for sale for this payment hash? Uh, and the, you know, the gateway will, or the, the, the Federation will say yes or no. Uh, if so, uh, the user or the gateway now enters into an escrow contract. They say, uh, I guess this is, I, I skipped a step here. So like actually the, uh, the, uh, the, the preemptive is, is threshold encrypted to the uh, pub key, the pub, the pub keys of the federation, just in case one of the federation members is the gateway, so they can't steal it if it's in plain text. They would see it and they could steal the pre-image. So it's threshold encrypted, I guess, uh, I think. Uh, so yeah, they're, uh, so they go buy it with eCash. Uh, they, 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 they basically deposit eCash and then uh, uh, this decrypts the pre-image and the federation is like, yeah, is the pre-image valid or not? If it is, then the gateway can spend it or if it is, then the user can spend it, right? The user now has the, the e-cash, right? So we're done. If, the, if they give a valid pre-image, it's done. If the pre-image is invalid, then the escrow contract can be clawed back by the gateway. So I didn't explain that last part very well. Any questions there? So just review for uh, receiving. Uh, uh, this gateway gets an incoming HTLC. They, they try to buy a pre-image that's for sale inside the Federation. Uh, if they buy it, they have uh, they have received Bit Lightning Bitcoin and spent uh, spent eCash, which the user can now claim. And so, uh, basically, the gateway is this money changer, right? They're just changing between these tokens and the. Uh, so the gateway are a separate entity to whoever is running the yeah. the mint. Currently, this is like a research question. Like eventually, after all this fancy taproot stuff happens, yeah. it'll be like a, if like Frost exists. So you uh -huh. have these like interactive uh, multi sig protocols, like you could have a, uh, a federated lightning node, like mm. the federation members yeah. can run a lightning node yes. uh, with their, the same pub keys or something, or the same key pairs like that. So that's like one of the exciting applications of these like frost, the frost and roast and stuff, but that's probably years away. I have a two-parter. So um, is the gateway the recipient of this HTLC or is it just intercepting it along the path? I mean, uh, I don't know the difference between the they're not, so they're uh, intercepting it along the path because they're not the like node pub key in the invoice because the node pub key doesn't actually exist. Okay, uh, so then how much time do you have to handle this before the node thinks that the route just failed? Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure actually. Yeah, yeah, well, but that's not in terms of, that's in terms of like, so it, it would be up the nodes themselves to say like, hey, I think this has failed and I'm gonna go redeem off chain. Would there be a way on to, chain. I guess, respond that you intercepted the HTLC and that maybe you're in negotiation to accept it in some special way? Or you just have to figure all this out? I don't know enough you know. about Lightning to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, that was the stuff that you and I were going over with the yeah. min, uh, min CLTV, stuff, yeah. right? And so you set the min CLTV within here of like, hey, uh, so, you have to, because they have to negotiate the yeah. distribution of the eCash before that HTLC expires. Yeah. So this is right. like something that you can also roll into the, the yeah. request itself. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Like yeah, yeah, because and the user constructs the invoice. So. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, but it might be a little bit of a problem when you're paying, like, because you don't have any, the Federation member doesn't have any control over the invoice that's presented to them. So maybe if that was like very tight time windows, it wouldn't make it. But I mean, this takes like, you know, I've been paying that, like the Federation members in my, like, like at this point, it's like totally prototype. It takes like five seconds or something. 
uh, with, with all the federation members running on the same machine. So it's like hopefully there's a lot of optimizations that can yeah. occur, but and I think epics in this are like under uh, like under a minute, right? Yeah. And so yeah. the negotiation is this is not like a waiting for ten minute block like ten minutes for a block, right? This yeah, like it, it'll be slower, right? It'll be slower, but then also like your node is like very well like ideally these are very well like relatively well connected nodes. Like the future here, the idea here is that like it, the hub and spoke model of the Lightning Network is what is going to happen, and so embrace that rather than fight it, like. Uh, and so, yeah, you'll make up time. You'll it, it's slow. The interaction with the federation is slow, but routing through well-connected nodes is faster than if you have your own little node that's like. Yeah, I just less. need from a technical question. So I, I guess since you know the the type of HTLC you're sending, you're okay with it taking a little while if it gets intercepted. I think so. What do you mean by intercepted? For because it's being intercepted along the path. Yeah. So if it's going to take a while for. This like any sort of response to come back. Well, it's on the final note that's being intercepted. So it's yeah. just like the person waiting to receive is like it's like a hollow invoice. So it's just like gonna redeem it like yeah. a second later. Yeah. Okay. I don't know enough about lightning to honestly answer. Like we're gonna have to try to like figure this. We're figuring this out. Like <laughs> I, I implemented like we did the first. Where's this Paul here? Paul's here. We did the first receive on this on a mobile app we made like. Yes, was it yesterday? Two days ago? Yes. Like it's just like very, it just barely works, you know? <laughs> if you know anything it's about that, it just barely works. Okay, let's get through this. So yeah, it's a way to earn yield, which is cool. Uh, so now this is what you have, right? Here are the federations, and it's just Lightning Network between them, and they're connected to the wider Lightning Network as well, which is kind of a cool, that's like kind of the final thing. And so yeah, it's like in terms of just like a technical audience, like why you, one reason you should pay attention is like it uses all the things, right? You got Miniscript, you got a consensus algorithm, you got key tweaking, blind signature, <laughs> threshold signature, cash register style coin selection, lightning, multisig, musig, and potentially frost eventually, right? Like, I mean, this is honestly maybe a downside of it too in terms of like uh, you know feasibility in the real world. Uh, but it's like an interesting like just if you want to have some fun. Uh, you know, the code base is really nice, it's, uh, you know, uh, the lines are never longer than a hundred lines, which is a problem <laughs> with some of these Rust open source projects. Uh, it's, yeah, it's well written Rust code, uh, and, uh, yeah, and here's like what it looks like now, it's just like a little lightning app, uh, and there's just one step to begin with, uh, where you have to scan a federation. QR codes. So this, uh, right now, this is just a U, it's, it encodes a URL, and at that URL, there's a JSON file with the like public config of the federation, like the pub keys for the different amounts, the, the uh, URLs for the servers, the uh, pub pub key for the Lightning node, the URL for the Lightning node, uh, or like the you know the or node pub key or like the, yeah, it has the host uh, threshold and the pub, pub keys for threshold encryption of the of the federation members, like stuff like that. And uh, but yeah, the cool thing is like the user experience is just like dead simple. Two buttons, send receive. You know. Why well, not something like I guess why this as opposed to something like Sensei or Galloway's? I don't know. We'll see. Like it's it's <laughs> yeah. It's like I don't know yet. It's just a fun. You know. I, I think the answer is probably both and all. You yeah. Know? Why not? Like the answer is not one. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I, was, I wasn't sure if you had thought through like the specific why. Yeah. As so. Like, as opposed to yeah. So one one like thing it. that's interested in it, about this. So to me, like uh, that's the thing that's really interesting about this is like you could it could be like a fr framework for financial applications, right? So like anything that a bank or a, a exchange could do, right? Like you could have little modules for that, including like connecting to fiat, including like anything you want, uh, and you, uh, someone who's running this code could opt into those, and ideally these would be like open source and like audited, somewhat audited, and so like you'd have a network effect there where like peop you could have like high quality kind of like a little back end that can do all kinds of different things, uh, and you're not just trusting like one like, entity to do this, uh, and uh, you know, it's so, like proof of reserves or lending or like a cold wallet, uh, arbitrary smart contracts, that's what, so like if you're interested in this, like talk to me at the hackathon, we're going to try to like hack simplicity into here, uh, whatever you want. So to me, that's one of the interesting things here is this kind of like a, a framework for financial applications at like a very low level. Uh, yeah. Do you see the Federation as like taking some fees on withdrawals or? Probably. I honestly haven't thought that far ahead. Like I think, I think they will. I mean, it's a valuable service. Yeah. Right, in terms or of like, maybe like a cooperative, like rough, maybe 
many selling muses could run themselves, like a make it run it. Together. Yeah, yeah, no, I think like the idea is like everything should be configurable. Every, like literally every single parameter should be configurable and then a market process will discover what uh, users are willing to pay for. Uh, so yeah, you could have like entrepreneur, like this is a framework and hopefully like entrepreneurs will uh, plug in and like tr try to discover that. Because that's an entrepreneurial problem, that can only be really solved through like entrepreneurial, entre entrepreneurship, right? You gotta just go out and discover what the user, what the, what consumers are willing to pay for. Go ahead. What would be the advantage of a shared lightning node over the gateway model? So like the end user, they're never trusting the gateway, right? Because it's mm -hmm. being escrowed by yeah. the federation anyway. What do you mean by a shared, light, a shared lightning node? I thought you were saying that with Frost. Yeah, OK. I just didn't know if that yeah. was like some other thing. Uh, I mean, yeah. so the plus side is that <laughs> The biggest plus is that it would be cool, I think. <laughs> so it's probably a bad idea. Uh, no, like it would just be fewer. It would, you know, you'd, there'd be less back and forth between some some other entity. Uh, it's just simpler. The, the problem with just having one guy controlling the lightning node is that uh, they could abscond with it, and so it is better to split up the ownership of the, yeah. those payment channels. Yeah. Like. I, but it is their money, right? The lightning yeah, node is their money. Yes. But so if they abscond, it, it's just like a denial of service attack. It's not theft. Yeah. But but like if you're trying to start a business, for example, um, and you you know you you don't have money, but you know how to run this. Yeah. Somebody could give you theirs. It would be better if that were in a multi-sig rather than just giving you all the Bitcoin to start. And then you could start like a like shared lightning node with the guy that gave you the money. Yeah. For example. Why yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of, I think, I don't understand these things very well, but there's a lot of these, like, shared channel type constructions yeah. that are theoretically possible. Uh, I don't know exactly. John knows a lot more about that stuff than I do. Why is a group less likely to skew than an individual? Uh, that's a good question. Do they have to coordinate? Yeah. Have you ever tried to get every, uh, people to agree on a meeting time? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get them to agree to steal someone's money. That was really easy. Okay. <laughs> You're per persuasive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that man there. Yeah. That man there. Get his name. Yeah. Untrustworthy. Yeah. Uh, I have a question kind of yeah. on this because like one of the uh, really good use cases yeah. here is like privacy, pegging in and pegging out, and kind of removing the connection between your previous UTXOs. Is there like friction between the privacy use case and the fact that like? the best trust model of a federation is to have public individuals. Do you think that there's like pressure that can come down for those kind of use cases? Yeah, I do think so. Like, I, I think, uh, I don't know, you, yeah, that's, uh, I forget, like there's some benefit, like if, if your assumption is like a regulatory regime where like everyone's gonna, like uh, there's gonna be a lot of pressure, like like state chains, I think. Uh, there was, listen, there's, there's a great Telegram channel about state chains. Uh, and there were some, we were having a discussion about there, and there's, there's some benefits to state chains. Uh, I forget exactly what it is, like if that's your assumption. Like to me, I think this would be useful in countries that choose, to, in places that choose to adopt Bitcoin. Like I think this is, something like this is how I think a lot of people are gonna access Bitcoin in like 20 years. Uh, like, so that's my interest in it. If you're thinking of like a very adversarial uh, scenario, like you could do like a multi-jurisdictional thing, kind of like Liquid, but to me that's, yeah, that's, no, especially if they're anonymous, like I don't know why the hell you would trust them. Also, yeah. if they're like a bunch of Bitcoin exchanges, shady Bitcoin exchanges, I don't know why you trust them. Yeah. If it's anonymous, you don't know if it's all the same person either. Yeah, you don't know if it's all the same person. Yeah, that's also that's also a problem. Uh, yeah. Because the anonymity protects them, but them being public almost protects yeah, the, you. The, yeah, the yeah the anonymity is why they can run off with your money. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I would. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, there are there are there is like NIMS have a reputation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, NIMS have. NIMS have a reputation for testing that will steal our money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, could a, a federation itself essentially. Uh, keeping a server online takes some care, right? So, like, uh, this is a skill set, and they'll compete, you know, they'll compete on how good they are at that, uh, which is so it's good. So, I think, you know, you'll get relatively decent prices, but you'll pay a fee because they have to make money, right? Yeah, like, the moment you're in, it, it'll work just like a lightning wallet. It's dead simple because there's no. You just assume that the you know the gateway will do its job, and we'll see if that actually happens, right? It's like a, it's a it's a hypothesis at this point, more than a, like we don't know if the gateways will if this will work.
in this example, you still have to deposit Bitcoin somewhere, right? You don't. You, you can receive light. It's just all lightning at this point. You could re receive Bitcoin, but... Uh, I don't receive, but how do you... If I'm joining, I want to participate with this federation. So yeah. I need to give them money somehow. To the yeah, so like the, the idea is like the gateway would sort of... You'd sort of bootstrap it through like getting a balance on the gateway. Like we haven't uh, figured this out yet. Yeah, I know. It, it, asking, like, like it works in theory, but in terms of like... Like that's the challenge of the next year if this like goes anywhere. It's like how do you get people to actually use this? It's cool in some ways, but like... Uh, we are uh, like that's my interest is I want to just want people to offer from exchange directly like Yeah, so that's a good that's actually a sales channel that we would like yeah. tr like if this becomes a thing Like you'd want to try to find ways to do that in like large numbers if you could Yeah, what the tree, what the yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you'd, 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 you'd get a, a lightning node to like get some if, if they have eCash if some of these tokens then they can receive lightning payments on behalf of the users. And we could, we, we just wanted this to be like a maximally simple first version. And so you could do a, an on-chain wallet eventually, but we just wanted it to be dead simple at the start. Any other questions? Have you looked into hosted channels? Not really. I've heard they're okay. somewhat similar. It, uh, yeah, they, it does compete and the feature set is similar. Yeah. Uh, uh, but this probably looks like it's more more flexible and you can do like way more things with it. That's, so that's the interesting thing. To me, like the privacy thing is cool, mm -hmm. like it's cool, but to me it's like the framework thing is the yeah. thing that I'm interested yeah. in. And that like the, the, the developer is very smart. Eric is very, very good developer. Uh, and like it's very much, extremely modular, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, like that's, that's the thing I'm interested in. Uh, more so than like just a private, like I think this is cool, but it's, I, it's like an MVP. Yeah, I think this is m much more private than hosted channels. Um, but yeah, the only way this isn't private is if you're in a little federation. Like yeah, that's that's yeah. the you're, you're in an anonymity set. Yeah, right. And so yeah. you want to be in a little bit bigger federation, but uh, you know, also it's like if it's someone you trust, like how bad, like it's is it how, like it's probably less bad. Oh, I don't know though. Like you sometimes don't want your whatever uh, friends to see what you're spending money on. So. How do I join the project? I was gonna say your mom. Like to be a gateway or a federation member, like what actually would I have to install? Okay, so I set up the first one in the cloud like two days ago. It's yeah. on reg test, <laughs> it like doesn't work. Uh, let me in, like How do I also Like this is this is where we're at right now. Like, oh, I love we have a reg sure. test, this yeah. is running in reg test. CSS is like over again, you right? can get a you can get this config. Uh, like, like here's what the config looks like. You download this, you're in. Like, the federation members are all running on the same host. This is not, we're not there yet, right? <laughs> so it's, it's very, like, the pub, this threshold key is not serialized correctly. It serializes bytes and not hex. It should be hex, probably. Uh, so we're, it's very early, right? But, like, this is... Can't say that enough. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, but no, that, like, as a developer, that's exciting, right? You want to... Participate. It's fun when you're on a project where you can just go and like make a. I showed up a month ago and I implemented Lightning Receive stuff. That was cool. Like I learned all kinds of Lightning. So, like that's what that's what you want sometimes is like a relatively early. Like when I was like Sensei's a great another great project. Like you can go there and contribute now. And if you wait, it's like hard to contribute to L and D kind of because it's just this monolith, right? So like sometimes if you want to actually get your hands dirty, you should choose a project that isn't ready. Mm -hmm. You know. No, I'd love to like check it out, but so like it's hackathon. Come talk to me during the hackathon. Okay. We should we should end this pretty soon because it's we're we going on like an hour. Huh? Okay. On that note, we are <laughs> the meeting is over.